my name is Isabel Rizzo, and the summer before 2011, I lived in the library because I was supposed to start school in the fall and double major in social justice and international studies until I found out about my student loan. I would have still needed 16000 to go to school, and not borrowing more than $5 from anybody, I didn't think it was feasible for me to borrow that much money to go to university. So instead, I started looking at alternatives. I would check out the books and bring them home and just devour them. And after finishing, I realized that there were lots of alternatives that people have for going to school. Upon finding TESOL certification, teaching English to speakers of other languages, I immediately signed up for a course and I had a friend in China that said I should definitely come out to China and help teach English. I needed to raise some money and with the help of a local coffee house and some of my teachers and friends, I organized a fundraiser and with that money I had enough to go get my airplane ticket to China. It was time to fly to Kunming where we would stay with our friend and we got settled in, this was our room for a few months now and we went grocery shopping like, like the Chinese do but then it was actually time to go and teach with an organization that my friends and I created called the Global Education Partnership where we recruited volunteers, Chinese volunteers, American volunteers, to come and volunteer teach English with students in two remote villages, Dehua and Jingdong. After getting involved in education and different teaching methodologies and taking my TESOL certification course, teaching an actual class in a remote village in China from learning and reading books about it was completely different. But I had an amazing experience and I really loved teaching. We arrived back home in Kunming where it was finally time for me to meet up with some entrepreneurs and teachers and just expats in general that had some advice to give. I met Simon Hu, a micro-entrepreneur in China who was also majoring in accounting. However, he shared with me that while running his little business on the side of his schoolwork, he learned much more about business than he ever did in his classes. Back in Kunming, I kept tutoring children and I met up with more people, including the president of Minds Abroad, Carl Jaramillo. Carl Jaramillo, I'm from, uh, well, I was born in South America, I grew up in New York and went to high school in North Carolina, back to university and graduate school in New York. I'm 29 right now, I'm a, a documentary addict, I mean, that's pretty much the only thing I watch. And if I had to say, in, in the realm of what's relevant here, what my favorite documentaries are, and so I would define that as uh, something related to my career or, or travel, education or travel, understanding the world, I would say uh, probably the best documentaries I've seen, are one would be Commanding Heights, which was a documentary made probably about 8, 10, 12 years ago by PBS, and it, it basically is an overview of the world economy and, and talks about political economy for the last 100 years, but a really fascinating, amazing documentary, it really shows you 
how the, the world took shape over the last hundred years. Uh, I would say on the, on the front of entrepreneurship, absolutely amazing documentary is Startup.com. It is the coolest, uh, coolest documentary. It basically follows a tech company during the, the boom of the late 1990s. Um, I would say whatever situation I was in where I was doing something, mo actually learning by doing, uh, is where I learned the most. Whether that was in a job or especially in what I'm doing now, running an organization and figuring out problems and overcoming problems and finding solutions, really actually doing things and rather than uh, you know having the test be something that is uh, that is created for you in the form of an exam. Uh, have it be really a test of whether what you're doing uh, makes sense and works in the real world. And it's uh, not something that's going to happen two months later when you take the exam that you're going to get feedback on, but really something that you get feedback on instantly as you're doing things, I think is, is by far where I've learned the most. Don't go into a career because you think it's some place you can make a lot of money or you can have a certain lifestyle. Really just focus on what's a career where you would be very happy and doing doing what it is you do in that career. And if you don't know the answer to that, then spend a lot of time looking. And if you have to you know, spend a couple of years trying to figure that out, then by all means, spend a couple of years to figure that out. The most important thing, though, is that you, know, you don't go on a path that's really going to lead you into a career that you're not really passionate about. And so take your time to figure that out. If it takes you till your mid-20s to figure that out, that's fine. If it takes you to your 30 to figure that out, that's fine. I, I know a lot of people would say, you know, by their junior year, if they haven't in, in college, if they haven't really figured out exactly what they want to do, they feel very anxious. And I would say don't, because I think most people don't really figure out what they want to do at that time. But a lot of people, unfortunately, when they haven't figured it out, they just kind of pick something and go into it, and then uh, regret it later. So take all the time in the world to figure out what you love to do. So at, at Minds Abroad, we have lots of students who come in the summer. We have students who come to gap years. So Minds Abroad is an organization based here in Yunnan, in, in China. We do programs all over China. Uh, Beijing, we bring students to Beijing and Shanghai, but they, they're mostly based here in Yunnan. Uh, and we also do programs in India. Uh, we have a very similar set of programs in India. And so I would say gap year is a, is a great way to spend some time, do something that's really amazing, and, and have some time to think about what your next step is. Um, uh, just generally studying abroad in the summer. If you don't, if you don't want to take off a whole year, you can definitely come and study and travel in the summer. Uh, and uh, and also volunteering is, a, is another great thing to do that, that basically can be done for free. Um, and if the funding is really an option, that's something to consider. Just to come and volunteer. But what I think would be great is to have more experiential learning, more learning by doing. Uh, that I think is something I'd like to see more in higher education. Less being in a classroom, hearing a lecture, writing down notes, taking an exam, more getting out into the real world and really doing things. Uh, my name is Colin Flayhut. Um, I'm from Colorado, Denver, Colorado in the States. Um, I'm 35 this year. Uh, I went to university, Colorado University in Boulder. Um, I did two years of that before taking a year off to travel, backpack through all of Asia from Beijing to um, where they go? Beijing to Calcutta by land. Um, a year later, I returned to China after vowing never to come back again because some parts of the trip were awesome, some parts were just too much for me. But I found after one year, I, all I could think about was finding a way to get back. I have now been in China for 14 years. I've opened Salvador's Coffee House here in Kunming for eight years with three other business partners. Um, I wasn't exactly sure what I wanted to study. My brother had done anthropology, so I got interested in anthropology. Um, in high school, we had Japanese and Thai exchange students living with us, and I was always fascinated by the philosophies in Asia and um, the histories and cultures. Um, so I decided to study Ch Asian studies as well as anthropology and got a double major at CU. Um, but after two years, I was on academic probation because I had done terror just miserably terrible. Um, for the first time I, I was free from living from my parents, you know, living on my own. Um, I think it was just too much freedom at once. So I did pretty poorly. Took a year off to travel through Asia. After my, my year off, I think I did better than I, I'd ever done. Um, I, I pretty much was a straight A's. So I definitely like the idea of taking a year off before college. I, I wish I had done that before I had wasted my first two years. 
I think getting out, I, there aren't many other resources that, that even come close to just getting some experience. So I think getting international experience is, is more important than anything. There are a few different sides to that. Like I definitely have college professors who I, I consider to be mentors and I still stay in contact with. When I have ideas, I pass them their way. Once I did get to China, and I have an infinite amount of mentors, basically everyone I met here who, who's educated me in some way or another, whether it be f foolish ideas I've had that they've set me straight, um, helping me get my language skills going, uh, loaning us investment money when we needed it, um, and there's so many who have helped over here. Uh, but really, we learned business by trial and error. So it's hard for me to generalize to say you should take a gap year or you should go straight into college. I think the main thing is you should try to find a way not to feel locked in what your next step should be. So if you feel like college is something you're, you're culturally pressured into as your next step, I definitely see the benefit of taking some time off first. Um, for me, I, t I did two years of school before taking a year off in college, and I wasted, I pretty much wasted those two years and wasted that money. Uh, if I had taken a year off first, it's possible I wouldn't have been old enough to really appreciate my travels as well. So it's hard to say I regret it. Um, but I think every person's got to, to find their own way and definitely don't, don't take the next step right out of high school just because you feel you should. Um, you don't necessarily have to do what you want, you can, but you should, you should think things through and not feel pressured into that next step. So I guess I'd like to see more um, scholarships involving international experience education. Um, I think that instead of focusing on getting your math credits done, your geography credits done, I think it's good to help steer students towards a certain focus, um, something that students are really interested in. Uh, helping students find a direction earlier has got to be more helpful and putting them in situations where they actually get more experience learning. Um, say anthropology, for example, maybe that means participating in an archaeological dig or, or visiting another country to do a, a, a participating in a real study even if you're just kind of a note taker for, for a professor. I'd see experiences like that being far more valuable than the A through F grading scales of the normal classroom. It was time to fly back home so we stayed a few days in Shanghai again because of our layover and we took one of the fastest trains in China, which was really cool. We went to Suzhou, which was a city by car. It takes two hours to get there, but by this fancy super train, it took only half an hour to get there. <laughs> Blake Bowles, I'm 29, and I went to traditional public high school in Southern California. That's what you're supposed to do. This was back in the year 2000. And I went to UC Berkeley, which was the best and the cheapest college I could get into. And I was studying astronomy and physics for my first two years until two things happened at the same time. One were about blocks sliding down planes, but it's about math. And I really realized that I was not so, and if you want to be a good physicist, you have to be so very in love with math. And luckily, at the same time, I was taking this one-unit elective uh, education course about creating educational television. And the person running that course handed me a book by this uh, school teacher, Gatto, John Taylor Gatto, who taught for 30 years, done really innovative stuff, and then he quit teaching. And he said he didn't want to hurt kids anymore. And that was his reason for not teaching. So he started writing and lecturing widely on alternative education different options, anything from charter schools to Montessori to unschooling. And so that just did it for me. I went on Amazon and found all of the related books to the book that I had read by him. And I found uh, uh, books about free schools, about unschooling. That set me on the path to study alternative education. Luckily, at the college where I was, I was able to design a major from scratch. I really realized what I was passionate about, and it was not something that was offered through a traditional college major. So I ended up graduating and been 
been working with unschoolers ever since. It's been almost a decade now. And so I run international programs like international adventure trips for teenage unschoolers. And I also run short leadership programs and well, I've got a bunch of other projects, but that's how I got into it all. Should you go to college or should you not go to college? Um, I'd say there's a couple important questions to ask yourself. First of all, do you really know what you'd want to do in college or what you want to do as a career? I'd say that three out of four teenagers do not know. And in that case, you need a period of exploration where you're challenging yourself, you're getting out of the place where you were raised, and you're doing completely new things. And to do that, you can go to college. And if you get lucky and you go to college and uh, let's say you get a full ride scholarship or you get into some incredibly cheap college, then you can afford to experiment and uh, go through this period of self-exploration um, without too much risk of taking on a whole lot of debt because debt is what you need to be afraid of. Ask yourself, do I need to go to college for this career? If you want to go into a licensed profession, then you pretty much always need to go to college. You can't say, oh, I definitely want to be a doctor and say, I'm not going to go to med medical school. That will not fly uh, unless you're going to some really alternative medicine. So if you want to become a doctor, a, an architect, a public school teacher, a nurse, anything where there's uh, a license that's attached to a college program, you have a good reason to go to college. Uh, if you want to become a research scientist or you want to become a professor, those people are pretty much uh, trained exclusively in universities and colleges. So that's another good reason to go. And then finally, a few friends who worked in some high-powered um, kind of consulting firms told me that if you want to get into a, a very wealthy traditional institution, or perhaps if you want to work for the government, then you should probably get into the, you should go to the best college that you can, like an Ivy League college. Just look at the track record of, you know, all of the, the U.S. senators and presidents. You'll figure out pretty quickly that it's a sort of old boys network going on. And if you want to enter that world, then college is where you should go. But for everyone else who, first of all, is not really sure what they want to do yet, or they want to go into a field that does not absolutely require college, then you should seriously consider either postponing college or taking time off of college if you're already there and you realize, what am I doing here? Or if you're in college and it's not working out and you're just accumulating a lot of debt, then stopping and not going to college anymore. And well, there's lots of other things you can do with your time that are highly productive. That's why I wrote the book, Better Than College Ed. That's where I explain it all. It would take too long to explain it right now. <laughs> you can do very good things with your life that are not college, and it can cost a lot less money than college and leave you without debt. That's a good place to be. I had the chance to interview my good friend, Carlos Maselli, who is a education blogger and TEDx speaker on innovations in higher education and he shared what changes there should be to this global problem of how education should change. My name is Carlos Maselli, I'm 25 years old and I'm from Argentina. Well, I, you know, I think education became very important to me after I realized that, uh, after I went through a lot of hardships with it, uh, education was kind of a, a, a path that I had, to, I had to go through and I you know, as I as I started, you know, taking the steps, um, I realized this just wasn't for me. And 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 I know that you're rarely alone in this world. And when you have a, you know, if you have problems with with some sort of system or some sort of mentality or some sort of mindset, then there's usually going to be more people like you uh, facing the same problem. So after you know, I had a, I had a, I was lucky enough that I was doing well on the you know. Uh, working uh, on the on the work aspect of my life, so I, I had you know I realized that I could um, take a, a step aside from from the from the traditional educational path to to basically take some time and really understand what what's wrong with it. Uh, and what I realized is that it's it's affecting a lot of people the way education is presented nowadays and. I just didn't want to see more people having the pros that I had. I didn't want to see more people, you know, uh, having to 
having to go through some sort of uh, I didn't want to see people having so, so few options uh, for their life in a world that's so, so different and so very uh, so global um, I, it really you know when you know I travel a bit and when you travel you start seeing that this is something sort of a global thing a global problem people are frustrated with education everywhere so I, I it just became important to me it just became important to me that to, I didn't want that to happen uh, anymore. So I would say that the biggest the, the biggest tool I've ever used to, to get ahead, to learn, to, to, to connect with a lot of people, um, to really uh, grow uh, uh, and, and explore my curiosity was, uh, first of all, my blog. <laughs> I started blogging in English for like four years ago and, and that little you know piece of internet real estate uh, gave me gave me the chance to connect with a lot of people that were going through you know were having similar interests and similar doubts and and I you know with being in Argentina I had a chance to connect with people from all over the world and that really expands your mind that you know that that's something that um, you get to explore all sorts of philosophies and, and cultures, even if not as good as if you were there, but just by, you know, the internet kind of gives you a little window to, to everything uh, that you're interested about. And, and that, that blog, I would say, was the biggest, the biggest tool I've ever used. Um, after that, it was, a lot, you know, the traditional ones, reading, <laughs> uh, read a lot of books, um, I would say I learned a lot from from uh, the institutions that I attended. Even even if I didn't, you know, like them for for myself, there's a lot of, there's a lot to learn there. So I'm I'm actually grateful that I went through it. And and I would say mentors. Mentors have been huge for me. Uh, a mentor is very important because he can give he can give you the the. He can give you feedback at a speed that you can't get, you know, in another in more traditional uh, frameworks, and and that you know that iteration can become you can you can grow and, and become better when you care about a lot in most other uh, educational settings. So yeah, I would say those are the most important ones. Well. What I realized at some point <laughs> is that it's all about, you know, what can you bring, what you're bringing to the table, and and what I, you know, instead of sometimes I think we are we feel that, our, you know, the protocols are are way too important, and they and they shouldn't be. So if you want to connect with somebody, you know, just the approach of hey, how can I help you? It's usually very you know, it, 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 it leads to good results. Um, this is not mentors. This could be for a potential job. This could be for a potential, uh, you know, a potential partner in a, in a business. It's really about um, if you want, you know, if you, in, in, if you want to be mentored by somebody, just saying, hey, you know, uh, I, I respect what you do. I would really like to learn from you. I think I can do this and this and that from you. Uh, um, which about something where you both are 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 getting from the relationship, then you know mentors. Uh, it, it's not that hard to find the right mentor. And the thing about mentors is that it's really there's no one great mentor for everybody. You have to find who, who works best for you in your particular situation. Uh, I would say with the most value to people. You can really get get a lot done in the world, and you can get a lot of a lot of help uh, from mentors or, or anybody else. Well, if you're leaving high school, I would say it's really about the best advice I could give you is to have a plan. And by having a plan, I don't mean you need to go to college or you need to get a job or you need to do anything really, but it, it has to be your plan. You have to be, you have to start decisions. And that is 
the scariest thing when you're in high school is that now there's no there's no safety net anymore. And what I think a lot of you know a lot of kids go through is they they resort to the default paths because they're trying not to make decisions. They're trying to get you to to have teachers or your parents or your boss to be in charge of what you should do. Um, you know, sure, you may need to explore. You mean, or maybe you have a very clear idea of what you want to do. But the point is that whatever you, whatever you end up doing, it has to be you deciding that and and, and be responsible uh, about it. Uh, that can be really anything. I really support any plan as long as it's something that you're choosing. So if you're living in high school, uh, you know, take some time to. Figure out what it is, what as vague as, as it may be. Just figure out where you you you're kind of trying to go. You, again, it doesn't have to be super clear, but you kind of have to make it your plan. And from there, just you're gonna start learning, and you're gonna start, you know, um, as you own, as you as you as you as you become responsible of your decisions and, and the consequences from it, you're gonna start making better and better decisions. So you and the path is gonna become clearer. Uh, the work do. Is to you know um, let this, this what the system, the educational system, or 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 your parents' system, or any you know any system that you don't fully agree with, to make decisions for you, because then it's really they're they're you know you're you're following their path, and if you find out you don't like it, you know. Well, you never make your your own decisions, so who are you, you you can't blame anybody. When things get rough, I think the what I realize is the best um, motivator for me. It, it's 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 two things. One is not to look too far ahead because you know try to stick day to day. Uh, you know it's it's always a Every you know things that matter are, are you know usually a result of a marathon, not a sprint. And you can't uh, you have to slow, and you have to make sure that you're you're making progress every day. So when things like that, just try to get get out of the way what I need to do that day. Now, the the what I real what I think has been the biggest um, uh, cure for for my doubts and hesitations, you know, when things are a bit, uh, are a bit difficult, is that I need to make sure that I'm doing something that I care about. And and that sounds easy, but it's been, but I've, I've actually been, you know, I've, I've been involved in many projects that I didn't feel 100%, uh, you know, that, that, they, that they should be my life's purpose. And, and every time I'm not doing that. At some point, motivation just just drops, and I think what you know, I, I can I can I can leave money behind. I can leave you know uh, uh, all sort of um, comfort behind. But what I can't leave behind is is the not not doing something that I really really care about. Uh, when things get rough, knowing that what I'm doing is important to me. And that what I'm doing will help others is by far the biggest, uh, the biggest motivator of all. Through this experience, I've learned about the variety of resources and alternatives there are for students. These were only a handful of the people working on innovations in higher education. Resources that have been helpful to me have been Skillshare, a great learning resource and class, Apothecary Circle and other Etsy businesses, Nerd Viteria for awesome support and inspiration. Zines and lots of other independent published books. The Art of Nonconformity by Chris Gillibo. TED Talks, inspiring me since I started the whole project. And the Young College Network, that's been a great support. The Bella V Project has only begun. This was part of my experience abroad and what I'm learning about innovations in higher education. I have compiled a list of resources that will always be available on my blog. These include college, online courses, experiential learning opportunities, as well as opportunities for entrepreneurship.